Hey folks, Maverick Watch Reviews back here with another review for you. Today we have the Seiko Prospects 100 meter solar chronograph aviator, model number SSC421P1. But first I want to thank Duty Free Island for this review unit. At Duty Free Island you get duty free, tax free, and free worldwide shipping. Duty Free Island only sells 100% authentic and genuine watches, and they're simply just a great bunch of folks to work with. They have great prices, huge selection, free shipping, you really can't go wrong. When you get a moment, check out their website and get yourself a watch. Now as usual, we'll open this up, look at the fit and finish, the features and the functions and the build quality, and I'll give you my overall impressions of this really nice Seiko Prospects 100 meter solar chronograph aviator. Typical Seiko watch box, you've seen these before. Actually, this is a little bit different than a normal Seiko watch box. It's kind of dark blue and it's a little bit smaller. There you go. There's the watch, let's go ahead and take this thing out. And as usual, you get all the normal Seiko accoutrement which is your warranty manual with the card in the back there and your basic uh, owner's manual. There you go, you've seen all this stuff before. All right, as usual, I'll go ahead and put up the uh, specs on the left-hand side of the screen for you. You are looking at a 44 millimeter case. It's 13 millimeters thick. It's on a 22 millimeter leather bracelet. It's 100 meters water resistant, which is uh, 330 feet. It's got the V176 movement in it with a six month power reserve. It's got a chronograph feature. It is hackable. Uh, like all Seikos, like, well, I wouldn't say all, like most Seikos, it has a hard Lex crystal. It's got LumaBrite on the hands and indexes. It has the inner slide rule. You can see right there on that inner bezel there. Uh, it has a date function at three o'clock. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. It also has a non-screw down, uh, non down crown at three o'clock as well. Uh, and it has pushers at two and four, and we'll talk a little bit more about those later too. So um, I, I saw this and I like the way it looks. Um, just a couple minor quibbles with this thing. Uh, nothing major. First, let me unbuckle it here. And this is one of them I'm gonna tell you about that kind of drives me crazy. And I wish Seiko would fix this. But uh, anyway, let's talk about the case first and talk about the dial and all that you know, good stuff. Uh, first, it's really good looking, very legible, good, good looking watch. I'm not normally a leather bracelet guy either, um, but I like the way this looks, kind of a real tough look to it, a real aviator feel to the watch. Um, there are four models of this watch. Uh, there's the black dial on the tan leather bracelet, which that's what you know this one is. You have a black dial on a black leather bracelet, a tan dial on a tan leather bracelet, and a black dial on a black IP coated stainless steel bracelet. And I'll include uh, links to all of those in the description field for you. So you have a couple different options uh, for how this watch looks. I personally like this one. Uh, if I was to get one of these, I like the tan uh, bracelet with the black dial. Uh, again, I, I don't, you know, I don't know anything about <laughs> slide rules, but those are pilots or you know, know how to use a slide rule. There are a couple different videos on YouTube that actually teaches you how to use this thing. It's for making different calculations and stuff like that. It's a neat little, you know, it's neat just to turn. I mean, I like, <laughs> I like turning it, but I don't know how to use it. So if you want to learn how to use one of those, actually, I'll go ahead and put a link to a YouTube video that describes how to use this feature if you're really interested in using it. Of course, it does have a chronograph. Everybody knows how to use a chronograph. Start right here, and you'll see the second hand start to move, and you'll see the sub-second hand spinning down there. Press it again, and it resets. There you go. Um, uh, very legible, you know, really good looking watch. Nice legible uh, uh, numerals there. Really nice legible numerals. The three is really cut off by the date window, as you can see. Um, now, another thing about the date window, this thing is really, really small. Unless you're in direct light overhead, you're gonna have a hard time reading that date window. Seiko really should have made this date window higher up uh, on the face of the watch, and it should have made the actual numbers bigger. It's very, very hard to read. There is no day function, it's just a date function on this watch. Uh, the pushers, the pushers could have used some knurling. There's no grip on these pushers, so if you're gonna use a chronograph function, for whatever reason, it would have been nice to have some knurling, some grip on these pushers, there's none. Uh, it's not that big a deal, but it would have been nice to have that. Um, the crown, it's not really meant to be a dive watch, so it's not a screw down crown, but it does hack. So when you pull it out, it's really easy to pull out. 
you'll see the second hand stops there. Your second hand, you're running second hand is over here at the nine o'clock sub dial. You'll see the second hand stops. So there you go. You can also see if you look closely, you can see where the solar, the solar panels are. They're under the 12 o'clock, six o'clock and nine o'clock sub dials. You can see that right there. It looks like the whole dial is not the solar panel. It's just under these particular sub dials right there. I guess they've really miniaturized everything well enough where uh, you don't need the whole surface of the dial to be the solar panel. Uh, I guess the solar panels have gotten strong enough now where you can just have just these three uh, to power the watch, which is really cool. I really like that. Um, the leather bracelet, very nice, but it does need a break-in period. Leather bracelets definitely need a break-in period. And this is one curious thing, and maybe anybody that has a leather bracelet can kind of fill me in. See the shiny coating on the edge right there where my finger is? It's like it's almost like it's patent leather or something. Maybe that's what it is. Or maybe it's a seal to help seal in the actual bracelet itself. And it's on all sides of both sides of the bracelet. See that shiny? And it's not a sticker. It doesn't come off. I guess that's just the process they use on making this leather bracelet. So anyway, interesting. Now, one thing that drives me absolutely bananas with a lot of Seiko watches that have leather bracelets is they have this permanent keeper right here. This thing does not slide. See this one? This one slides up and down. This one does not slide. So if I was to buy this watch, again, this is just me, I would cut this thing off because when you're trying to put the watch on and you're trying to go from inside of here, then you have to loop all the way back down, literally only maybe what, a quarter of an inch away to get this bracelet in on the other side of that keeper. It's a pain in the ass. So if I was you and if you're going to buy this, I would cut this thing off and just use this one leather uh, movable keeper over here. This one's just really just gets in the way and it's, it's really a pain in the ass. Um, you have a nice buckle, a nice stainless steel sign buckle right there. Uh, and the watch is comfortable. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and try it on here in just a second. Uh, here's the case back. Nothing spectacular. You have the Seiko logo, you have the Prospects logo, some information about the watch. Um, that's really about it. Nothing remarkable about the case back. Uh, the crystal, again, it's going to be hard lex. You can see it's slightly domed, just ever so slightly domed to magnify the dial of the watch. Nice little touch. And these Harlex crystals are really, really nice. Uh, they really do a good job. You don't always need a sapphire crystal on a watch, even though they're nice to have. Uh, but you know, the price point of this watch, you're not, you're definitely not gonna get a sapphire. So I'm trying to think of anything else about the watch itself. Um, that's really, I think you're gonna be surprised about the loom and I think you're gonna be disappointed about the loom and I'll show you that here in just a second as well. But a really good looking watch, solar powered, you, you know, you got a six month power reserve. You don't have to worry about, you know, batteries, changing out batteries or anything like that. So that's, that's one function I like about this watch. So let me go ahead and pause the video because this thing is kind of a pain in the butt to get on my wrist. Let me go ahead and pause the video. I'll be back in just a second. All right, folks, I'm back. There you go. Really nice wrist presence. I like those rivets right there. That looks really cool. If you're into that, you know, particular style, I like that. Uh, with the leather bracelet, I didn't even use this keeper. I just went to the next one. Again, I would cut this thing off. It's just a pain in the butt. I mean, it's comfortable. You're going to need, to, like I said, a break-in period for these watches with any, any watch with a leather bracelet. The leather just needs to be worn in. And again, if anybody knows what that shiny coating is, let me see if I can take this off relatively quickly. There you go. If anybody knows what that shiny coating is, coating is right there on the sides of the bracelet. I'd be really interested to know if that's normal um, if that's normal with all leather bracelets, I don't think it is, but again, this is not a sticker. I tried to take it off. I don't know what it is, man. It's just really, it's, uh, interesting. I don't know what it is. There you go. Let's see if you can see it. There you go. So anyway, so let me go ahead and, um, let's go ahead and kill the studio light. Let's go ahead and zap this thing real quick. And you can kind of see a little bit of the loom there. Man, I was super disappointed in this loom. <laughs> um, it's just, you can see here, here we go. There's just like next to none of it. The numbers themselves are not loomed, just the little dots above the indexes or next to the indexes, and of course the hands. Even the second hand is not loomed. Um, I'm sorry, not the second hand, the uh, chronograph second hand. That's not loomed either. I was really, really disappointed with the loom on this watch. And I mean, it's, it's lunar bright, so it's going to, it's going to last pretty long, but it's just so little of it. I mean, look at the, how small those little pips are. They're, I mean, they're tiny. I would have, it would have been really cool if they'd actually loomed all of the, uh, the numbers. That would have been super nice. Uh, again, it's going to last a long time, but it's just, it's just so small. 
And again, the chronograph second hand is not loomed at all, and neither is the actual running second hand on the nine o'clock subdial. So don't, you know, this, if you're looking for really bright Seiko bright loom and a lot of it, this might not, this might not be the watch for you. But again, if loom is not a big deal and you don't care about it, then, you know, this, this, you know, it has the loom on the minute and second hand, I mean the minutes and hour hands. And I guess that's technically all you need. But um, anyway, there you go. So I like this watch. I like the look of it. It's not my particular style uh, of watch. I'm not a big chronograph fan. I, I have no need to ever use a chronograph, you know, chronograph. But some folks out there do, and they love a nice chronograph watch. I'll never use the slide rule, the inner slide rule, even though it's neat to kind of turn it. <laughs> it's neat just to turn it around. And people wonder what it is. Like, what is that? And, you know, you could pretend like you're, you know, Sully Sullenberger. Oh, yeah, this is my slide rule on my aviator watch. But anyway, again, I would never, ever use that. But it's a good-looking watch, absolutely. Seiko makes really nice-looking aviator watches. So if you're really more into style over function and features, uh, this is definitely, uh, definitely should be one of your considerations. So anyway, this is $206 over at Duty Free Island. And again, I'll include the links to this watch and all the other styles in the description field. And I'm trying to think of anything else I forgot. I think that's it. Until the next review, I will see y'all later. Take care. Bye-bye. I'm the king of super zombies in the video.